Hi, I'm Greg Schnell, and I am here to uh, share uh, some ideas around using chart lists on stockcharts.com. We've got lots to cover off today, so let's jump right into it. Covering off our chart lists, I want to start with why they're your best friend on stockcharts.com. They're literally the file and folder structure, much like you would use on your laptop or on your desktop computer. They work extremely well. I find them so helpful. So uh, hopefully I've got some bright ideas for you that will uh, make your experience at stock charts um, very easy to roll through. So first of all, what is a chart list? A chart list is like a file folder. Um, it's a way of organizing a group of charts and a group of charts could be the NASDAQ 100 or it could be a group of commodity charts. It is just a list of charts inside this folder called the chart list. And so how many you can have depends on your membership level. All memberships can have at least a thousand charts inside one list, but um, there's three different membership levels and you could have one 250 or 500 chart lists. I have well over 300 chart lists with hundreds of charts inside many of them. They're my favorite tool. I jump around through them um, just seamlessly. It's just part of my day. So an example would be you can sort by industry, or chart style. And so if you see here, I've got um, a number and then a letter code and then the name of the industry group. And if you look down towards where the Bs start under banks, uh, daily and uh, weekly, what you'll see on there is that you could also have the same information with different chart styles inside that chart list. So as an example, for banks financials, I would have daily charts and for banks financials on weekly charts, depending on what I wanna look at. So do, do I want a big picture or am I looking closer um, on a closer timeline to see what's going on? So feel free to, um, to think about the chart lists like file folders on your computer, but because we're technicians, we sort things differently. And when I say that, organizing technical work is different. Um, technical analysts sort stocks by price acceleration or action or patterns. Um, we're able to identify what stocks are weak, what stocks are strong using the tools um, that come from technical analysis. So chartists scan for stocks by using sector, industry, price action. Um, I joked with our producer, chart baristas beautify by drawing and annotating on their charts. Sometimes a chart technician wants to start with a clean slate. Sometimes a technician will have one chart they just keep drawing on. When you analyze, so what data it is, is as important as the analysis itself. So as the chart changes, you want to also be aware that your data is changing. And perhaps that's something you need to keep track of. For me, it's one of the most important components of my analysis. So in light of the above, we, meet, we need to set up our chart lists to work with us as we work through this process. And so those names I put in italics, different names interchangeably used for chart technicians. But essentially, chartists are people who work with charts to decide on investment decisions, not so much on earnings or fundamental analysis of debt and all that kind of thing. So to make a chart list on the members dashboard, you'll scroll down to chart lists and you'll click add new and you'll add a name for a chart list. So I'll give you some examples of a, a chart list name. So this is some sector chart lists I have. And what I've done on this particular list is you'll see here, I've put a number and that helps control it. And I'll explain, control the sort order. And I'll explain how to do that in a little bit. But here I've made a nice long descriptive title and you have quite a few characters that you can define exactly what is in that group. And so um, in this case, I've used Canadian, but I could have just as easily used US sectors but the, the idea behind having a sector chart list is if somebody says the consumer discretionary list is breaking out or consumer discretionary stocks are breaking out to new highs, then you might want to go look at that. Or if gold stocks are breaking down to new lows, that's an industry group. You could go directly into that industry and see what's going on. So there's all kinds of different ways to sort it. But for me, the most important ways are grouping things together. So within a list of over 300 chart lists, I've picked 10 numbers here just to put them in order. 
And, and the idea behind doing that is I always know when I want to go look specifically into some computer uh, related or technology related information, technology stocks in Canada, there's not a lot of them that are publicly traded, but I have 63 that I've got saved in a chart list. I can quickly go to that list and look through them to see if they're starting to turn up as an example. So the other way to do it is when we're when we're looking for through the market to see what's going on, one of the things that will happen is a group of stocks will start to break out together. So you'll start to see automobile stocks turn up together. All of those different uh, clues help you in the market. So what we like to do is we run scans for stocks that are moving fast, and I call them scanning for Ferraris. And then we might have stocks that are beaten down, turning around. And right now that might be marijuana and gold names as an example. So scanning for dire straits, what's starting to turn up. And then um, just always give yourself a, a unique name for your scanning and you can dump into them. Now, my money tree hourly, daily and weekly scan, that's a scan I specifically have set up to run on uh, different time frames. And the idea behind that is, if I'm starting to get buy signals on the hourly or on the daily or on the weekly, I'll run the scan to see if they're all starting to set up together because one of the best parts of technical analysis is getting signals coming across multiple time frames um, coincidentally. So all of a sudden they all start to fire up, all of the charts are just getting to the right place and that gives a lot of momentum. And then lastly, there might be some scans you, you run specifically. So this one might be uh, full stochastics looking down and full stochastics looking up. And this might be PPO looking down and PPO turning up. And, you know, you could pick a different name. So if I'm looking at Canadian stocks, I'll use Windermere. And if I'm looking at U.S. stocks, I'll use Scottsdale just to give me um, something different to dump into to make sure I don't accidentally overwrite the other stuff. But everything that's ever in a scan folder can be written over and I never want to go back and check to see if I need it. It's literally if I need it, I take it from this scan result and I move it to another chart list that I won't write over automatically. So to control the order of the chart lists, like I mentioned, and again, we're just talking about the file structure. So these are folders that we're going to put charts inside. And so it, the way stock charts is set it up is numbers are most important, then symbols, then letters. So what would happen is if you, if you title a chart list um, with a set of numbers first, it's going to go before anything that's just alphabetically sorted. And they've also put in a symbol um, in that sort order. So um, by putting this 00100, that's going to put it above just using the dollar sign or just above using the alphabet. So I can control how things are sorted and I'll give you some examples of that. So again, here we have a chart list for scanning results. We've already seen this, but the idea being, see how I've numbered them all the same. So for my scan results, I want a very low number so that's near the top of all of my chart lists. So it's easy to dump into. I don't have to scroll a long way down the page. And then from that, I, I put different names on the top of them, right? So um, money tree, and then I had to put one, two, and three here. Now, why did I do that? Well, because otherwise daily would go above hourly. So in order to get them sorted in the order of time, I want hourly, then daily, then weekly. I have to put this other series of numbers in here. So um, stock charts is really smart this way. It allows you to really customize your sort order. But for me, one of the important things is making sure that you group things together. So all my scans are in one place together. I have industry groups uh, grouped together. And then the one problem you might have is you might have something today. And then you need to add another scan list. Like I'm constantly adding scan lists or chart lists for different industry groups. And so when you get inside these chart lists, what you need to do is you're going to add a chart and put a name in it. And so, uh, so we need to figure out how to do that. Now, first of all, I'll just show you how to put the chart into a chart list, and then I'll show you other examples of uh, how you might format that. So adding a chart, you're going to put charts in it either manually or one at a time, and you're going to, or you could use the scan engine to add them. Um, lots of different ways to go about that. Uh, 
in a half an hour, I can't possibly get into all of that, but I'll show you how to put the charts in. So when looking at a chart, you're gonna click Save As, pick the name of the chart uh, for the chart, um, like a file on a computer, and then select which chart list to save it into, which is like the folder on the computer. So here's an example on the stock charts page where you'll add your, your stock name or your chart name inside your chart list. And this is a drop down menu that you could click on and choose any one of the above. So it's really easy to do. It's on every chart and it's very quick and easy to get to. So tricks around date sorting inside chart lists. I use a ticker symbol and then the year, month and date in that order. And this enables to see me when I have looked at the company. So as an example, if I go check on Apple, I wanna know the last time I looked at it or annotated the chart. And so I've got that all saved and I have what's called a working chart list where basically anytime I just see a chart and it's like, oh, I wanna go check on what Apple's doing, I'll go dump it into that chart list. And it's right at the top of all of my work. So it's very easy to drop it in. It's one of the first ones I can use. And then when we go into this, I'll show you some tricks around the three slides below. We can sort it by anything we want, but the, the good news is by putting in the ticker symbol and the year month date, it really is helpful as you go forward. So this is my chart list called the Canadian Technician Chart List 2021 part two because i've already filled up one chart list this year and then what happens is within that chart list every time i go look at the stock i'll i'll add its name and its date to it so this mood chart i've only looked at it once in august but here's microsoft i've annotated it a couple of times and you know i've got other charts that are 30 listings within the same thing the important thing is it's also the time. So something mo more recently, or perhaps one's a daily, one's a weekly, you can just write that in. So as an example down here, I've said, I've got it with the US tenure um, on this um, municipal bond chart. So you can also add more information, but by putting the date in this sort order, it makes it very clean to see which day you looked at it. Whereas if I did day, month, year, it would be all over the map. It would be very, very difficult. So um, you can also sort though by other columns and, and the idea behind doing that, you just click at the top of the, the column to change it. So here is an example. So I've got Lightspeed and I've checked into this stock four times, Nuvi, I've checked into it a few times. And sometimes I'll write the dollar number on here and that might be the date I actually bought the stock and at what price I paid. And then there's a checkpoint and you can just see I've looked at it a few times and then there's uh, or sorry charge point and then plug power whatever so by looking specifically at the dates it gives you a really good idea of when you actually looked at the charts last so then um, the other thing to be aware of is you can sort on anything right so you can sort on in this case it was the change through the day so normally Vuzi wouldn't be above Tesla and plug. And so anytime you see your charts out of order, it's probably because they're being sorted on a different tab. So an industry chart list example, <clears throat> you're going to make one stock per ticker. And, um, and then you're going to add the date perhaps that you looked at it, or maybe it's just a chart list like all of the consumer discretionary stocks. So you don't really want a date in there, but you might want to sort them just for looking at them based on strength. So in this case, um, these, are, these are software stocks. This is today's rate of change, um, how fast they're moving today. And so these are the top performers. So by having an industry chart list all set up, I can go see how fast and which software stocks are moving. And then this number here at the front, these were ranked as the strongest stocks in order a while ago. Now I can remove those and replace those at will on stock charts very, very quickly. And um, if you go check my Market Buzz videos, I do that all the time, almost every week, um, remove the numbers and put new numbers on. And a lot of times I'll sort based on scooter ranking or I'll sort based on price change, maybe for a day or for a week or for a month. And you can affect all of that right on the summary page. And by, by changing that up, um, it allows you to look at the strongest stocks first. So um, 
within a chart list, I might like within an industry chart list, I might not actually add the date. I would just um, use the stock chart sorting tool to add a sort order to them so I could look at the strongest ones first. You also have um, an issue that when you, I mentioned it before, when you have an industry group and you add a new industry group, you don't want to have to go renumber everything. So use numbers at the front to control the order. So as an example, I had all my scans at the top and I would, I had my scan number. Well, when I group industries together, if I put them all as 6010 and there's whatever, 150 industry groups, it's going to be all messed up. So I actually use 6010 hyphen and the first letter of what I'm thinking about, and then another hyphen, and then actually type out the name. And um, it, it gives you a much cleaner result to do that, but that way you can add. So if I'd have done 60, 6011, 6012, 6013, and now I go back and add something like airlines up at the top, all of a sudden I have to go change all my numbers. So by doing this, I can just keep all the letter A's together and you'll see that in a second. So save your historical work in other chart lists using dates. So that's an example where, where I showed you at the top with, uh, with Tesla having multiple dates or Microsoft having multiple dates. That helps. And then on top of that, you can actually take the whole chart list, like my Canadian Technician 2021 chart list, and save all of the charts from that time frame. So if I want to go back and look at how the oil stocks topped in 2018, I can go back into my 2018 chart list of annotations and look and see what I was thinking when that happened. Um, keep your scan results listed near the top because you don't want to go past 200 chart lists to find your scan results. And organize your scan results by name or scan type, as I mentioned. So here's an example of all my historical stuff. So here's Canadian Technician 2018, my first one, my second one, my third one. And I've reserved these numbers over here. And this year I'll add part two onto it at the end of the year and just um, add another chart. So, and this tells you how many charts are in the list. So that number is very important for you controlling the order of your chart list in, inside the bigger picture. And as I mentioned for industry groups, so here is 6010 NASDAQ 100 or natural gas, right? And just by using the N at the front, I can control everything. And then Canadian energy stocks, exceptional oil and gas 60 minute chart. So all the charts in this list are on my 60 minute time frame. All the charts in this are on a daily and all the charts of this are on a weekly. And then I might only wanna look at stocks above a dollar. So that's a, a shorter list than all of the oil and gas exploration stocks in the US. So it's just a way of saying, do I wanna trade penny stocks? Probably not today. So I'm gonna move up and I'm gonna to go to stocks at a higher level. Um, and you can see uh, any way I wanna sort this. Um, so I wanna call it exceptional oil and gas, but the E would have moved it all the way up by having this 6010-O for oil. It keeps them all together regardless of what I named them after. Okay, so one of the bigger things that we need to talk about is current stocks. And the, the problem we have when we operate a current stock list. So again, there's two different ways to, to group things. We have a we have a file and then inside the sorry, we have a folder and inside the folder, we have a file. When you do current stocks, you're going to need a list of all the stocks that are currently active. And one of the things that's hard is when you're in summary view, the only thing you can see is the name of the stock and the current price, but it doesn't really help you with how you're doing on that stock. So I add the date and the price that I bought them at. And I can look at that in the summary view to compare. So what does that mean? So we're going to spend a bit of time on this chart. Now, I want to explain quite a bit of um, my logic around how I do this, because I think it's one of the easiest ways for you to see um, for you to see the value of sorting your charts inside your chart list and keeping your chart lists all together. 
So this is a chart list called current stocks. Um, and in it, I have bought some stocks. Now here is Converge Technology. I bought it on, um, on in 2021 on October 13th. I paid $9.53. If I wanted to, I could put the number of shares in here too. But the idea being, I want to be able to look and say, what is the current price relative to that price over there? And how am I doing, right? So today it's up. But what I want to know is, am I still in a profitable position? How profitable is my position? And then here is Meg Resources. So I bought Meg Resources um, back in the spring. And at the time I wasn't adding the dates, but the problem I always had was I knew I owned it. I just didn't know about when I owned it. And so I've added the date just recently. I've started to put this in more into effect, but what you'll see here is I bought Meg for 661. Well, it's trading up really, really well. I went and I bought more Meg in, in May. And then when I bought more, I put the, another chart in there with the current price. And the idea behind that is now I don't have to go look and say, what were the different price points I bought the stock at? But it, I can also on that chart, I could draw an arrow to it, or I could put a line on it. I could make any sort of annotation to say this was the day and this was the price. The price is going to be right up in my title every time I look at the chart. And so all of these things um, make it much faster for you to peruse. So then I went on and, and Meg started to break out again. So I bought it again. I added a third position um, to it. And so as I keep working in on, on these stocks, what I and I can't believe, for my example, I forgot <laughs> to put this price point in. Um, but as it's starting to break out, I want to keep comparing and make sure um, that my most recent entry is profitable and then work backwards. So down here, I've got CVE. I bought a couple of them. and, and um, Canadian Natural Resources, I bought some a year ago. And then I've recently added to it because they were all breaking out again. So that's kind of the idea. And then the other thing that you'll find is all of a sudden, I'll start to go on a streak. So as an example, Lundin Mining, which is a mining stock, I started to buy it in October. If you go back and and look at the rest of my list. Here's October 13th for more mining stocks. And Capstone is another mining stock. And Gold Resources is another one. And Hud Bay Minerals is another one. And Victoria Gold. So all of a sudden, I started to notice that the mining stocks were breaking out. And so um, I had one in there. And then I started to add more to them. Well, what this helps me do is kind of get a feel for when I started that. I'll call it thrust into that industry group as it broke out. And then as I start to sell it, um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take them and I'm going to move them into uh, a sold chart list and put the date I sold it and the price I sold it at on there. And I might just add it to the title or it doesn't really matter because I've got it covered off on my on my uh, trading software. But the, the idea being use this to really help you see what's going on in your stocks all the time. And again, um, if I was looking, so here's Uber, I bought it in 2020. And I said, you know, I'm going to put a little bit of this away off to the side. Well, it's one of my worst trades, it's sitting down here $7 less than I bought it. And it's like, why do I hold it? Well, it was one of the names that I actually thought would do pretty well, regardless of how um, uh, aut autonomous vehicles went and all that kind of stuff. So I just said, I'm going to buy a little bit of it and put it away. I'm glad I only bought a little bit of it because it's been just a hard stock to watch. But the, the example I want to make here is that if you can start to see um, when you bought the stocks, how much you paid for them, how much profit you have locked in on them, um, on your summary screen, it will really make your trading better. And so hopefully um, this is a good example for just um, making your title more detailed. And the other thing I would add to this is when you're um, trading, uh, one thing you'll find is it might be that at the beginning of every month, you start to put more money into the market or at the end of the month or in the middle of the month or whatever it is. Is there a certain period of time that you're always putting money in? 
I'm pretty much once the industry group starts to break trend lines and horizontal support resistance, I'm starting to look more into a stock. But for each person, they're going to find different trade setups that they've got. By analyzing your past charts, and again, just having the title and the date and the price um, on the chart, and then you go back and look at the chart, you'll be able to see how you did on that trade. And as it went forward, were you, um, did you have to sit through a large drawdown? So as an example, um, on my, uh, my Synovus trade, I sat through a large drawdown from this 630 purchase, but um, started to add again in September. You'll get an idea um, by going back and reviewing your trades why that works better. So use these titles of your files inside your chart lists to help you get organized. Okay, so the, the biggest thing I want to point out through all of this is that the chart list folder system is your friend and, and feel free to be as detailed as you want. Remember that the number, then the name is really important. And so in a big wide list of, of um, chart names, you'll be able to find what you want and put things together. Again, I have over 300 and for, for various reasons, they really help me. Now, sometimes it's because I'm doing a tutorial. So as an example, every week I have a, a market master chart list that I work through. It's over 300 charts. I just copy that to the next week. And I, I kept my old annotations by keeping the old chart list and then make my new ones. So I can go back and talk about how specifically gold was a buy for, for technical analysis, a sell, and show somebody who's never traded technically how that works. So anyway, I hope you'll use these examples to try and set up your chart lists um, to make you more money. So in summary, when you're building out your chart lists, you're going to have multiple different styles. And I've generated um, a, few of, a few of those pictures. So an industry chart list might be software specific, or it might be oil and gas. Um, a market overview, that's the <clears throat> the big picture. So I look at stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities every week and then I just kind of keep rotating that forward and all of a sudden copper starting to break out. So I'm gonna go buy copper stocks, that kind of thing. Then when I see copper starting to break out from my market overview, then I'm gonna go directly to an industry group or maybe into the mining group or materials group and then look at those specifically just to see if the whole group is performing or if it's just one or two stocks that are starting to make the move. And then it's always good to keep an idea on what's happening around the world. So I have a chart list of foreign markets, both monthly and weekly, not too concerned about daily, but mostly monthly and weekly to see what's going on. Um, I trade a lot of commodities. So that's one of the big things um, that I work with a lot. So a lot of my charts are commodities based. And then um, you might have a chart list for crypto. I think there's over 150 crypto names now. So you can go and put all of those in a, in a chart list and just work through the different currencies and look for breakouts. And then weird chart lists like recession watches. What do charts do when we have a recession? Go look at that. Great historical charts. How did things top out? How did Blackberry top out? How did um, Microsoft top out in the year 2000? That kind of thing. And then scanning chart lists, just um, as you do your scans, you dump things into them. And then Use the most powerful tool available. Use the numbering system to keep them grouped within your accounts. So all your scanning chart lists are together. All your foreign market chart lists are together. And I think you'll find that that's very uh, valuable. And for more information on chart lists, um, a few years back, I wrote this book, Stock Charts for Dummies. It's still applicable today, but it shows you how to look um, for strong charts in the market, how to sort them and then how to save them. Uh, it's available in the US a, through the Stock Charts bookstore at the best price you can find. And then for the rest of the world, use Amazon for lower shipping costs and no custom charges. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, whether you're a chartist, a chart barista, a, a chartered market technician, a technician, a chart analyst, whatever you want to call yourself, you're going to need tools to help sort your work and chart lists and and charts within your lists are really, really powerful if you can organize your work. Um, hopefully I've given you some ideas for that and good luck with your charting. Thanks everybody, bye-bye.